So welcome, bonjour, hi, welcome to the stream. I'm Frank Boucher, I'm a Microsoft Cloud Advocate. And today with me, another Cloud Advocate. And of course, I'm waiting until he, he takes his, his a sip of coffee or anything he's drinking <laughs> to introduce him. John Papa. John, how are you? I'm doing great, Frank. Thanks for inviting me on Twitch. It's been a hiatus for me. Oh, wonderful. And uh, we'll be talking about Azure Static Web App today. Am I correct? Um, that's what you told me, yes. <laughs> yeah, I decided, <laughs> of course. <laughs> I'll guess that I ruled them and say, yeah, you will be talking about this and that. And uh, you're, such, you're such a drill sergeant, you know? Yeah, I'm sure of it. <laughs> I'm sure everybody will, will, will trust that. I'm sure of that. Oh my God. Yeah, no. So, uh, so that's that's very. I was very happy because that's one of the last kind of. Do you consider that this has a product in Azure or like because it's a little bit more than just a feature. It's not like they had the new backup. Like it's really its own category. And of course, the dog will be barking. Sorry for that. Look, a little bit of noise here. It's okay. If you'd like, I can bring my dog in and they can talk to each other. Because <laughs> that could be a very fascinating Twitch stream. Yeah, that would definitely be. But less Azure related, though. But yeah, you know. True. Yeah, it, it's. Um, I never know if you call them products or services, but yes. Uh, oh, yeah, I use service. It That's what I mean. It's, it's more than a feature. That's That was my point. Yeah, it's got its own. I mean, it, it's on the same list of things you can do in Azure as app service and Azure functions, etc. But really, I think you're thinking about it right because it's it's really a aggregation or a collection of many services from Azure put together mm -hmm. in a really nice and easy to use way that scales really, really well. So yes, it's a new product because there's things in it that you can't get outside of it. But uh, it's as we talk more about it, I think it'll make sense and why this is a um, confusing thing to talk about. <laughs> Excellent. So then, should we get started? <laughs> now, I think I think we're time's up. We should just end the Twitch stream now. Okay. And... Well, have a good day, everybody. <laughs> I will see you tomorrow. <laughs> Let me switch scenes so we can uh, see your screen. Okay. And I am going to... And voila, yeah, you should hide me because I'm... But I'd like to see you! Yeah, but... Uh... <laughs> it's too, right. much, too much of me for everybody, I think. <laughs> you know, everybody out there knows you, Frank, knows you can't get enough Frank. <laughs> Tell that to my wife. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's see. One, two, three. I was going to zoom in a little on that, too. Cool. Excellent. Look. So, where do you want to start? How do you want to roll things out of here? Let's let's clarify a little bit. Like like we're just open kind of the Pandora box, saying like, okay, what is it like the static website and like wh wh where why it's different than like just using it on a regular server or anything. What's what's that beast? Well, uh, let's actually go check this out. We're gonna we're gonna wing a couple of these things because that's what you and I agreed to. Let's go look at the main documentation page, yep. Roger Static Web Apps, and see if it can help us explain a little bit. Excellent. And just for the, the folks in the chat who would like to follow us, I'll put the link in the chat for them. And it looks like the screen hasn't updated yet in the stream. I love how the stream's like 10 seconds behind. It's always fun. Oh yeah, if you're following on the, uh, the Twitch, there's a little delay. Yeah, so one of the keys to Azure Static Web Apps is, um, and they, they talk about here, like, what does it really do? The, the key things is it's going to give you a static website and optionally uh, serverless functions. And put those two things together, because you always have, you have something to display. That's your reach, email, JavaScript, CSS. And you're going to have some kind of data access to something somewhere, whether it's your own database or another API or whatever. So Functions kind of helps you there. And then it deploys all that stuff easily on Azure, uh, and that's the, you know, the ten second version of what this does. So I have a question for you then. Yes. Let's assume my grandma is in the chat and uh, she doesn't know what a static website is. 
like why today in 2020 a static because like static website of okay we understand that you know like it's html like it doesn't change it, it's not like a server side where like things are built on the fly yeah but why today that thing is useful because we want things to be dynamics if i'm adding a new blog post i want like if i'm using a static website for a blog i want that thing to to you know had the you know i want that thing to grow and change so how how, how does that work it's a good question I, I one of the things i don't like about modern technology and this goes across the board on everything really is we have we meaning technologists have made the the words we use so confusing to everybody uh, and sometimes I think we do it just because we think we're cute and clever <laughs> you know okay so what the heck does static mean um, really what we're looking at is there's HTML JavaScript and CSS in our web apps pretty much everything we do these days revolves around those three things so let's just call them web apps things okay. that we use those three things to build with why do we call it static because once we build the assets, we build all the stuff, because um, you can't just, and we can talk about the build process too, but uh, with modern JavaScript and web frameworks, you can't just say, I'm writing my code, I'm gonna go publish it, because you wanna make sure it's small, it's optimized, you know, everything works together. Mm -hmm. so there's always a build process these days, not always, but most of the time. Uh, so the static part comes in on once you build it, it's done. Like your HTML and JavaScript and CSS don't change at that point unless you physically go change them. So all you have to do is take those files, put them up on a CDN or a web server or whatever, and just serve them. Those things don't change. And that's why CDNs are so cool because you can literally put that stuff up on a CDN, get it at the edge of the internet, and whether one person or a million people hit your site, they're all getting it wicked fast. So the static part of it is, once you're done writing the code, you don't have to send anything new for HTML and JavaScript and CSS to the client uh, until, like, you know, you publish a new version of it, which for obvious reasons. Yep. So that's the static side of static web apps. And quite frankly, I just call them web apps. Okay. So all the generation, we'll, we'll review that later, but that's before they are published. And then what's the function? role in like that thing if it's the content is static the functions and, and i want to stress that they they are optional so azure functions are, are optional in this model uh, but just looking here at the screen for example here's a picture of an app that you could write and it's got like a list of groceries um, this is a pretend app that i wrote for a couple demonstrations imagine this is an app that you wrote that in today's society, you're trying to connect people who need groceries with people who can't go get them because of yep. COVID, yep. you know? So Frank's going to go out there. I don't want to leave my house. Frank's going to go out there and get my groceries for me <laughs> based on this list. Um, so expect, it's a web app. That expect kind of a few out. days of a delay for the shipping. <laughs> <laughs> Especially if you hand deliver. Yes. <laughs> yes. So this is the idea here is you've got an app like this. And on this app, there's obviously HTML displaying the content. There's CSS for the styling. Uh, and then there's JavaScript for the functionality, right? Yeah. But client so side JavaScript. Yeah, all client side. And where do functions come in play is how do I get this list? Like, where does this come from? A database somewhere. But how does the client app, the web browser, talk to the database? It's through code. And that code has to run in a function, um, literally a function, <laughs> that's either written in serverless technology, which is what we're talking about here, or you could build a web server that runs ASP.NET Web API or PHP or Java or Node or, you know, you pick your favorite back end. Yep. But why pick a web server to, why crank up an entirely new web server and a VM to run a function that goes and gets your list of shopping? when you could just use serverless. Yeah. Because then you don't have anything to maintain. It's just the function that goes and gets me my list of groceries. Yeah. And Does that like, make sense? Yes, because then storage is uh, one of the resources in Azure who is really budget friendly. It's one of the cheapest. 
Yep. And they're the serverless who you just get bill by the time it runs. So getting the list of your grocery, if it takes two seconds, then you're billed two seconds, right? Exactly. You're billed for what you use on consumption for your grocery, for your functions. And obviously for the storage, which the storage is yeah, holding. Yeah, there's, there's a little bit of more of that, but like in, yeah. in the all, like it is a very, very budget friendly solution. Yes. Compared and to if your uh, server that. is there, then like the server is up and running 24 seven. So like you're paying for it 24 seven. Right. If you had a full blown server yeah. and not, not only just paying for it, but you've also got to maintain it and do security updates and patches and yeah, <laughs> you know. No, if it's a, if it's your thing, good. But uh, we're talking developer here. <laughs> so Frank, if, if you if you think this is a good time to do it, um, the pitch I try to show about static web apps and why this is valuable, maybe it's worth spending two or three minutes going through that to explain it to the uh, viewers. Yeah, sure. Let's go. Okay. So the idea here, and this comes from a presentation I've given. I'm just going to give it a little bit of it. Is that you're, you're a developer somewhere. Like if you're interested in doing this, you're probably a developer or a manager of developers, for example. Uh, and what you want to do is you've got a web app of some kind. Let's say it's this grocery list and you want to deploy it. So you wrote the app. Now you want to get it out there. Uh, your company probably wants to make sure it's got, you know, it's really robust. Well, what does robust mean? So let's think about this. You've got your code. And the code itself is what you wrote and it's what's running the app. You feel great about that piece. Well, you just want to deploy it, right? So you're like, I just want to push it to GitHub and somehow get it to the cloud so the world can see it. So Frank's grandma can get her grocery list up there. Okay, simple enough. But you also probably want CICD. That's an assumption we're making. You want, as soon as you push, you want this thing to continuously deliver to the cloud. So every time I push, I want it to do whatever it has to do to get ready and then push it up to, let's say in this case, Azure. So grandma can get her groceries again. All right. Well, what about the APIs? Now, as Frank mentioned, you know, you've got to go get data for that list of groceries. Are you going to hold up your own web server? Or are you going to host them on serverless? Uh, you got to make that choice. Something else to think about. Once you put in something running your APIs. So something's running that code, whether it's serverless or a web server, and you've got your app running. You really have two things. You've got your app and you've got the APIs. And has anybody ever heard of something called cores? <laughs> so cores runs into play now. Now you've got to route your requests from something served on one server, your app, to your APIs on another server. And you've got to allow that. And how do you scale those communications? So now you need routing with tools like a reverse proxy or cores. My head's starting to hurt. Then your customer, then your company says, hey, you know what? We also want a custom domain. I don't want some crazy URL. I want this to be at Frank's grandma's grocery list.com or whatever it happens to be. Uh, and I want to set up a secure connection with SSL and get my own certificate. Great, is that gonna cost money? How's that gonna work? Oh, and yeah, by the way, we're gonna have like preferred customers and non-preferred customers. So we'll let anybody use our site as long as we know who they are. And to do that, we need authentication. So we need to know Frank is actually Frank. And we need security roles so that we have preferred users who come in and can say, you know what? Yes, you're Frank, but Frank bought the preferred level of our company's policy, you know, whatever it is, like a subscription, let's say. Uh, so I need to know who they are because to those preferred members, you can also access the discounts at local grocery stores. Oh, and by the way, this needs to work in Asia, Africa, Western Europe, you know, United States, wherever, South America. So we need global scale. So we need this site to be accessible all around the world. Holy smokes, Frank, this, this is the problem, right? Everybody writes code. But then they just assume that as soon as they push it to the web, they're going to get all those things. And that's where Azure Static Web Apps, to me, really comes into play because it gives you your app and lets you just focus on that thing. Um, whether you're writing it with Angular or React or Svelte or Vue 
and this is when I'm going to switch over and show you. You can be a developer in any of these things, whether it's Alpine, by the way, new JavaScript framework, Angular, Aurelia, Backbone, Eleven-T, Elm, Ember, Flutter, Gatsby, Glimmer, Gridsome, HTML, and I'm not going to read the rest. But it doesn't matter what kind of developer you are for the web, you're going to have these problems. And that's where something like static web apps comes into play because it lets you literally just focus on the code. You hook it up to Azure Static Web Apps and then it publishes your app and gives you all the things we just talked about. So that's the real pitch of this because this kind of a model is becoming more and more prevalent on the web today. Companies want to run websites without having to have servers in the back end and deal with all the security issues. And I'll give you one more thing. I, I worked at a company a couple of years ago where we had seven environments. So we had, I always forget them all. There was like dev and staging and load test and QA training. And then there was prod and um, light prod. I forget what they called the light prod. There were like two versions of prod. Nothing, nothing for the DBAs? <laughs> Probably was one there too. Yeah. Because last time I worked at a place with seven environment, there's like DBAs, like there are DBAs QA and the DBAs prod and like you, you continue. It was, it was long. So many it's a lot. And you know what, let's say you've got a web server and you've got to support seven environments. Now you've got seven servers you've got to pay for. With something like this, you're not paying for any of that. You go back to that model you mentioned and now you're just paying, you know, a couple pennies a month for whatever your function usage is, you know? Yep. Yeah. Pretty cool. So that's the idea behind all this. Is that, does that make any sense to anybody? <laughs> For me, yeah. <laughs> we got one question. I think we should keep it for later. But uh, mm -hmm. do you still see the chat, uh, John, or do you want me to? Read I do. It? I'm looking at it on my phone. Okay. Here. So from Silicon Orchid. Hey, both. I currently use the older with AZ storage and CDM with the newer, a newer AZ static apps. Is it served from a single location? Let's answer these one at a time. So when you say older way with AZ storage and CDN, Yes, you could literally set up your own storage solution, your own CDN, buy your own SSL certificate, hook up functions, set up cores, maybe use Azure front door. I'll stop going on, but you could do all that yourself. Um, it'll probably be very painful, quite frankly, <laughs> and you might need Frank to help you hook it up, um, but you could still do that. With the newer version, um, Silicon Org is asking, is it served from a single location? No, it's served from multiple points of presence around the world. Uh, I believe we may even be adding others, although I won't commit to that because I'm not on the engineering team, so I can't. But uh, I believe it's in the US, Europe, Asia, and Africa right now, although on exact locations, I'm not sure which ones. So a CDN is kind of embedded inside that thing. Yeah, and I'm, I'm being careful not to say CDN because it's not specifically the Azure CDN product. Okay. So it's something that they've built for this product, I believe. Oh, you know what? I didn't know that. Learning something yeah, every day. Uh, so she's, uh, she or he is asking, would I still need to add something like AZ CDN on top of this service? No, you don't need to in order to get global performance. No. Um, or is it a version of CDN wrapped into the service? No, it is. It's basically a custom solution. Um, Azure has a lot of products and services. So basically they came up with a way to do the global presence um, behind the scenes using the same technology as the Azure CDN stuff. Good question. And the other one was, uh, is there any, any staging slots? Is, does it use staging slots? Yeah. So, um, Azure has something called, they call slots, right? Which is a way for you to have multiple versions of your app or environments, like we were just saying, QA and staging, et cetera. Um, right now, Azure Static Web Apps is in preview, which most of the rest of the world calls like beta, <laughs> right? It's a strong preview, but yeah, okay. Yes, so it's not, uh, the way Azure does things is preview means it's available to the public and you can use it, but the pro, this isn't across the board, but and I'm not a marketing person, so, you know, grain of salt here. But to me as a developer, what that means is it's available. You can use it. You'll get support. But things might change a little bit. 
And, you know, I probably wouldn't roll out like walmart.com on it now this minute. I'd wait for it to go to the next level, which is called GA, which is general availability, which is when you get full blown service is grown up into an adult or a major. Um, but right now there's no staging slot, right? There so, is one with preview. Oh, really? Oh, there's one. One. Okay. Okay. So you could have prod and staging or whatever. Like you have one side. Yep. Oh, I didn't know that. I thought it was no for now. Okay. That's cool. Hey, Frank, since I don't have access to it, let, um, can you type into the chat shop at home dot dev as a URL? It's up in my little URL there. You can see. Oh, I don't see it because we have the title, but uh, let's ah, okay. shop. I'll put it in the our chat. Dot net, you said? Uh, dot dev. I'll put it into our Skype chat. And you oh, can excellent. I think I got it right. Let me test it so I'm not sending everybody somewhere else. And boom. I will add that to the show note too. Uh, yeah, that will work. So. That's a custom domain that I bought just so I could do this demo and have it around. This is my main slot, right? This is my production version of it. But what I've also done is if I go to the GitHub button here, we'll just open up the GitHub repo. Uh, one of the things that you'll notice is that I've got a pull request open where I set up a staging pull request. And I'll click on that. And when what I've done, and we'll show how to do all this, but what I've done is I set up this pull request and by default with the preview, you get one staging slot or they call it a preview. Uh, and right here you can see I've got a URL, which is like a crazy URL. <laughs> it's com moss something or other. And if I click on that, you'll see now here's the app and it's in green. Um, and I did that on purpose. So what's on the left, is the main production version of the app. What's on the right is my pull request with that URL. Okay, so they call it preview in the uh, vocabulary of the uh, static website, but then to align it with Silicon Arcad question, that's your QA slot. Yeah, it could be staging or... Oh, I staging, yeah, I said QA, yeah, staging. Oh, yeah, well, I, I you know what, I didn't know that. Nice I, thought, I thought for now it was just one thing, so that's pretty cool. Yeah, it is. And, and just to show you the difference there, you'll notice not only is it green, but this version I wrote in view and the version on the left I wrote in Svelte, just to show that like the pull request could be massive code changes or, you know, minor little tweaks. Uh, but it allows me to now tr test this one, this preview one, uh, without affecting the, the, the other one. And then I can switch some as soon as I merge into master. So I'll go get that. I'll go get rid of that button there. Wonderful. So great question, uh, Silicon Orchid. Great question. And hello to all of you. I see a lot of hellos in the chat. So awesome. Feel free to ask any questions along the way. So I guess the next step on this would be, all right, if we step back and we wonder why do you need some of this stuff? Let's go back to this presentation because I think this will help make sense. So I mentioned, you know, you could you could use like th there's 30 plus web frameworks out there. Uh, you can use anything you want. This one repo I'm going to show has these four. It's got Angular, React, Svelte, and Vue uh, because they're probably the most talked about ones these days, uh, arguably. But you could use any of them. Now, what you really have to think about with these is all the modern web frameworks have this command that we run with uh, Node called npm, npm run build. This is when we take the JavaScript and we uh, we use cool words like we talked about earlier, like mangling and minification, which basically means take the big JavaScript file and compile it down into a smaller file that we can send to the browser. Because you don't want to send more stuff to the browser than we need, because that's wasting time, right? So the, the npm run build command puts all that together for you. And what they do is they run 
like this here and out comes three files generally. You're gonna get your HTML file, your main page, and you're gonna get a JavaScript file and a CSS file. That's like the minimum that you're gonna get with most of these sites. And effectively, that's what lights up your app. So with that, Azure Static Web Apps can do all that for you. So there's my name. <laughs> what you're really getting here is three main things. You're gonna build and host your app. Obviously, that's, that's an, I don't wanna miss any assumptions here, but you need to host the app somewhere. You can also add authentication and authorization, which if, if you've ever done this, adding authentication authorization is not always easy <laughs> to applications. When you see what we do today, I think it's gonna be pretty impressive. And then optionally again, you can, the auth is also optional by the way, you don't need it if you don't have to have it. Uh, but the APIs with functions are also a nice feature. Yeah, for, for a three. blog, I know like static website, a lot of blog are running on static website. You, you don't really need a, uh, an authentication or authorization for a blog. Exactly. And one of the things that we'll deploy, we'll use, um, maybe we'll pick Eleventy or Hugo, uh, and we'll show how these are common blog platforms. We could show how you can push an Eleventy site up to Azure Static Web Apps with no auth, no APIs, uh, and just see it run. Yeah. Oh, and it's, uh, I always put this, forget this part. It's really important, but it, right now it's powered by GitHub Actions. So it actually just adds what you call a GitHub action file to your GitHub repo, which is what basically powers the um, the build and then the deployment to Azure. The workflow procedure to do all the mangling, like you said. Yeah. And this, we end basically where we had before at the beginning with the docs. This is where you end up having your static content gets deployed, your APIs get deployed, and collectively, they are known as your static web apps. And you don't have to set up cores or reverse proxies or nothing. They know how to talk to each other out of the box. All that security is there, and you get an SSL certificate. Uh, looks like we have some questions. Do you want to? Yeah, yeah like, I was just waiting for you to, uh, you know, <laughs> we, need, we need to uh, <laughs> put some content before asking all those questions. But yeah. So I'm assuming the like so uh, Matt Lebo was asking for the ratio traffic. So usually when you have different slots, sometimes you will have 20% going to your uh, staging or your QA, and then slow or like and, and still part of your resources using uh, the production, and then you could you know migrate and go more and more. But in the static web app, since you don't have any backend, like you have the backend if you have the API, but that's function. Do you, can you still do that kind of thing? Can you play with the traffic? Well, first of all, the answer to any question is can you is always a yes. <laughs> uh, it depends what you want to do and how much effort you want to put into it. But is it baked into static web apps to have what I call a dial-up strategy? No. Oh, yeah. uh, let me explain oh, yeah. that. So like a dial-up strategy is, is what we're saying is you've got You've got a main production site and then you've got some new features you want to roll out and they're in a second site and they're in your preview as we're calling it uh, you're going to have both those running but if you really want is let's say 80 percent of your users to hit your production site and 20 percent to hit this new features to kind of test them out uh, what you really need is some kind of a um uh, F5 or that's a product, um, reverse proxy, load balancer, et cetera, Hold to divert balance, traffic. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and I call it dial up because what you're doing is maybe it's 20% today, but next week it's 30%. You know what I mean? Yeah. 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 Like you're growing uh -huh. until your canary just like, <laughs> exactly. So can you do that with this? Yes. Azure has products that'll do that, but out of the box, static web apps will not let you go okay. between the two. You have to pick which one gets the custom domain. Okay. But that's, Matt, I really like this question. And if you like this feature, because I love it, um, maybe we can put the GitHub repo into the chat and have um, Matt open up an issue on yeah, the GitHub sure. repo for Azure Static Web Apps. I will do that right away. Because it is baked in in the uh, regular web app, right? So I, I think it's where that thought come from. Yeah, and I'll put this. I'll put the link to the repo in our chat again, Frank. So you Is don't have the, to copy oh, it. Okay, so. I'll try to make your life easy today. <laughs> um, but yeah, if you go to issues here, Matt, 
if it's not there already, I've got to authenticate. That's fantastic. There we go. Um, you could go ahead and check that out here. This is basically where we're, we're directing people to go to this repo and the issues and add issues here for anything that they want or any problems that they have. While you're doing that, I'll um, answer Silicon Orchid's got another question here. At the moment, AZCDN provides a free SSL cert, which is super nice after having to do this all by itself in the past. I'm not sure if John already said this, but do you have the option of a free SSL just the same? Um, and I'm sure you can add your own if you have one. So yes, with Azure Static Web Apps, you get a free SSL cert out of the box. Uh, it just comes with it, which is great. Uh, can you bring your own SSL cert? I don't think that's there today, although I know that's a common question, that if you have your own SSL cert, how can you connect it to it? Uh, and I have to believe, I don't know this for a fact, but I have to believe that's going to be one of those things that, that okay. comes with this. Yeah. Um, that would be my guess. Like if I open, let's just type in SSL. It's not there. So at Silicon Orchid, if I could beg you and Frank could beg you, this would be a great thing for you to add to the issues uh, if you want to bring your own SSL cert. Uh, another question here from Silicon Orchid. You got lots of good questions today. Uh, I have a can you question that maybe not yet. Can you serve sites from an Apex domain? Last time I was asked, it was not yet, but the team is looking at. Um, how about if I told you, yes, kind of. <laughs> so <laughs> It depends. That's the new version of it depends. Um, you can't see this, I think, as Frank's screen is cutting off the very top of the URL. But if you go to that shopathome.dev, which Frank put in there into the chat, uh, you'll notice that you could just type shop at home.dev, which is an Apex domain. Let me back up. What's Apex? Apex domains are also known as naked domains or root domains, meaning when you go to google.com, you might just type in google.com, not www.google.com. So by not having to say www. that means it's an Apex domain. Out of the box, there is no support for Apex domains. However, we have a blog post that the amazing Burke Holland wrote, which walks you through how to connect Cloudflare to your site to effectively give you the Apex domain. So I can literally type shop at home.dev and it goes right to my site. And it takes like five minutes to set up through Cloudflare. Uh, but I know this is on the uh, radar to automatically do from Azure as well. So yes, not yet, but you can do it right now, and it's it's working. Like, I don't know if you can see what I'm doing, but I literally just well, typed in just shop at home. Not to maximize your window, we'll probably uh, we're missing just a few uh, pixel. Yeah. There we go. Can you see the URL now, Frank? Yeah, it's tiny, but I can I can see it. Yeah, I don't know how to make that bigger. <laughs> You're on Mac, right? Oh, yes. Or, yeah. So I don't know how to zoom on Mac. So you'll notice like this URL is at www, but if I get rid of the www, and I'll get rid of the home just to be clear, I can literally just type, I can even get rid of the HTTPS, I really just type shop at home.dev and it redirects automatically to where it's supposed to go. So the Apex domain can work. I believe if we go back to the docs. So it Today, you just need to do it with uh, Cloudflare. It's very simple, but probably that they will be embedded some sometime close in the future. Yes, and I think it might be in, where the heck is it? I know Burke wrote a blog post on this. Um, and what we did is we linked to it from here for now. Custom domain, I think it's where it is. Um, Apex. So I can open up that. Here is the blog post that Burke wrote in May. I'll plop that into the chat for yep. you. I was just about to ask that for you. So Silicon Orchid, great question. Uh, if you follow those steps, it took me, well, be honest, I'll have an honest moment here. It took me 15 minutes to do it the first time, not five minutes, because I read the article too fast. <laughs> so It's classic from all of us, right? You, you think you yes. know it, it's just like, yeah, okay, no, I understand. And then like, oh, I missed that part where they say, don't do that. or. Uncheck the checkbox. 
and I felt so bad. I'm like texting with Burke, you know, he's friends of ours, and I'm like, your stuff doesn't work. And he's like, did you do this? I'm like, no. <laughs> yeah. Oh my God. <laughs> Bang. Hey, we got, uh, we got Raid by uh, Coded Live. So welcome, um, Raiders. Party of nine people, just join us. Talking about static website. Web app. Website. Web app. Yeah, we got a couple other people in here too. Um, just to catch people up, we're talking about static web apps. And we haven't deployed an app yet, but we probably should. Yeah, maybe we should. <laughs> do you want to do it now or do you want to cover some uh, other grounds before? Uh, let's cover a little bit here just to show what we're going to do. So here's my demo slide, just to kind of give you an idea. What we're going to do is we're going to deploy that whole shop at home website just to another place. Um, and I'll take you from ground zero. So we're going to have an app. Uh, it's going to have an API, and it's going to have auth. For the first demo, all we're going to do is deploy the app itself. We just have GitHub, and that's it. So let's just go to GitHub and just deploy the app. Sounds good. So Sounds first, like an easy plan. Uh, where is my GitHub repo? There it is. Too many tabs, man. <laughs> so if you want to try this at home, you can. It's uh, github.com slash johnpapa slash shop at home is the GitHub repo. This is the GitHub repo for the URL that we were just showing. Inside this repo, there's an Angular, React, Svelte, and Vue version of the app. Just because I like to... You know, whatever you like to use, you can use whatever version. We're going to use Svelte today because I've been loving Svelte lately. Uh, but instead of using this repo, here's a cool feature some of you may not know. This repo is a template repo. So if I go up to the top, I can type in slash template. Or I can click this big green button, which is easier. <laughs> and we click that. And it's going to say, okay, basically what it's going to do, it's going to create a new repository in your organization uh, and name it whatever you want. We're going to call this uh, Frank Twitch. <laughs> and I'm going to keep it public so you can all see it. Probably so it's won't an live alternative that. as Fork? I didn't know that. It's similar. So Fork gives you all the branches. Uh, sorry, it gives you all the Git history and everything. What template does, and you have to tell your repo it is a template, is it gives you uh, in this case, just the snapshot. master branch. The snapshot of the last version, right? Yes, oh, the most okay. recent version. And I could choose all branches, but I just want master. That's cool. I didn't know that so, trick. Wow. I'm do that. So it's created the new repository. It should only take a few seconds. Yada, yada, yada. This is where you can sing the Jeopardy song. And then... One thing I don't want is, remember, the repo I just took it from is actually connected to Azure Static Web Apps. So I want to not have that here because <laughs> we're going to do it from scratch. So inside this GitHub Workflows folder, there's a file here. And we're going to ignore this file for now. I'm going to delete it right from GitHub by clicking on the trash can. And I'm going to commit it right to master. Uh, and the reason I'm doing that is because when you start with your own project, you're not going to have that file. So now we've got this repo, and this repo is right here, and we got all these versions of the app, and we'll go look at the Svelte app folder. Um, here's my package JSON, which you, know, you can see in there, I've got a build command, I've got my dependencies in there. Very simple setup. Um, so that's, that's the app itself. Now, if I want to go deploy this, I have to go to Azure. And I'm going to log in. By the way, you can use a free trial to do this. And once I'm in Azure, I can go click Create a New Resource. And I can type in something like Static Web Apps Preview. I'll make this bigger. I'm going to click on Create. Now, here's the interesting part. If we, why is it in this one? Hold on, I'm in the wrong place. There we go, that's because I work for Microsoft. <laughs> While we're waiting for a loading, uh, do you know if it's in the roadmap to be able to deploy from a FTP? Uh, deploy from FTP, I don't know. 
That'd be interesting to find out. Why am I in preview? Hey Frank, I'm in the I'm in the MS yeah, portal. Let me, give me one second. I will share with you a link. Oh, it worked. Sorry, clicking that button let me do it. Okay, so sorry, yeah, folks. That's because Frank and I work for Microsoft, so we had a special version of the portal. You won't have that, and you don't need it. Yeah, it's uh, sometimes it's a broken version. <laughs> yes. So here's the real version. It's a portal dot Azure. Um, and you have to have a subscription to Azure, which again, you can get a free trial. Um, we can try to get that later. A resource group is basically like, think of it like a folder or a drawer in your dresser. It's basically, where are you going to put this thing? So let's create a new one. I'm going to call it Papa Delete Frank Twitch. <laughs> so I'm going to delete it later. Yep. A lot of time I call it to delete. That's my resource yes. group name. And then we can name our app. Uh, we can call this Frank Twitch. It doesn't have to be in the same name as the repo, but I'm going to do that. And then we can tell it what region do I want to put this in. Now, it's going to be globally distributed. So that might feel a little weird, but it's going to be globally distributed. But there's certain parts of it that will only go in one region because there's other things behind the scenes. So I'm going to choose East US because that's where I happen to be. And then I'm going to sign in with GitHub. And because I've already authorized GitHub to do this, it didn't prompt me, but it would prompt you the first time. And then I'm going to tell it, go to my John Papa re uh, organization. I have like 200 repos, so I'm going to type in Frank. <laughs> that will filter down to the only Frank repo I have. And then I'm going to choose the only branch that I care about, which is master. So I've now connected it to that repo that we created over here. Next, you might be tempted to click on review and create, but you should click on next build. <laughs> Because this is where you're going to tell it information about your app. And these are the most important questions. Where is my app located in that repo? And let's bring this up side by side just so we can see it. So on the right, we can see the repo. And we can see that the app is actually located in a subfolder called Svelte App. So because I'm not, the app isn't in the root, I'm going to type in just Svelte App. Now, let's, for now, let's just pretend we have no API location. I'm going to type in uh, doesn't exist <laughs> as my folder name for API because if it doesn't find it, it won't work, which is fine. And here's the hardest question. I don't like the wording for this, and we're trying to take feedback on it. Uh, what this question is asking you for the app artifact is after you run npm run build or whatever you run to build your app, where is the folder in that Svelte app folder that will be what Azure needs to deploy? So like when you run the app with Svelte, it's actually going to put all of its content in the public folder. When you run it with Angular, it's going to put it in dist slash the name of the app. So this is different based on what tool you're using. So I have a little handy dandy guide, by the way, if you're ever confused in this, in the Hello World's repo. If you scroll down to your app, like Svelte right here, there's the name of the folder that it by default will publish to. So I'm gonna go back here and I'm gonna type in public because we're using a Svelte app. Notice public uh, exists over here. Doesn't have to exist in GitHub because maybe it gets built on the fly. So as long as we have the name of the folder where it exists, um, wherever our API is, and then because we're going to skip for now, and then the name of where is the assets. Then we're going to click this blue button. It's going to let us review the choices. Then we're going to click Create. And now behind the scenes, Azure is creating all the resources that we just mentioned earlier so it can build this application. And now you can see here it's got some links. Um, our URL, Frank, you'll be happy to know, is called Happy Coast. Wonderful. <laughs> if we click on that, you're going to see it's it's not li it's live, but it's waiting for your content. So it's kind of live because it's building the app for the first time. So we'll kill that. Uh, and if we go look at the um, deployment history, the GitHub action runs, mm -hmm. it's going to open up our repo, go right to the actions tab, 
and you're going to see this CI add Azure Static Web Apps workflow file. This file was added to the repo by Static Web Apps in Azure. Uh, and you can see it's yellow because it's in process. So if we click on this, we'll see what the heck this thing is doing. We can see there's a build and deploy job step. Right now it's building and deploying. What does that mean? Let's go back to the action and we'll click on it again. You see this workflow file. This is what was added to the repo. It's saying that when master, when I'm basically it's looking at master. Could you zoom John? Yeah. I told you I was the advocate of make it bigger. <laughs> you got it. So it's looking at the master branch for us because you can tell to which branch to look at. And the key is really down here between lines 28 and 33. So right there to there. Uh, that's why there's comments. Notice that these are the values that we typed in when we uh, just filled out that form. Mm -hmm. So we can change these later. Uh, but these steps are basically saying, go ahead and whenever there's a uh, change to master, go ahead and rerun the build process for this application. So let's go back to the actions. So that's a YAML file that was added and that's what we call the GitHub action. And there are yep. a workflow. So a, like a, any build process step, like a list of step that the some agent will execute. Yeah, it, um, it's our CI, our continuous integration, and it's our CD, our continuous deployment. Because when it's done, you notice it's got a green check mark now. And just to avoid the elephant in the room, the reason there's an X down here, remember I deleted a file when we first made the repo? Yep. That file was an action, and it was going to fail because I deleted it. <laughs> so, um, so now if we go look at it, the job completed. And you can see it built it, build it, it, and deployed it. it. <laughs> I can't speak. So down here, you can like look what it's doing. It ran npm install right here, uh, and it does all that stuff. We don't really care, but at the end, the key is now go visit your site at Happy Coast. So I can either do it from here, or I can go back to the portal and click on Happy Coast right here. And there's our app. What? I don't so have any sound effects. But... Yeah, basically, and how long did that take? Let's go look. It'll actually tell you. One minute and 13 seconds. Pretty good. So this might be a good point to, we, we've done the app, right? So far, all we've done is we've created the app. Here, let me show you. There's a few questions related to the... Uh, so you had feedback based on your uh, requests for feedback for the uh, artifact. Yeah. So they had some people saying build artifacts. So uh, Chris Skitter was saying build artifacts. Um, I like that. What? Uh, some people were asking if uh, the application was validated. In the build details, does application validate the app path? Let's put it in, or is that have? Is that a? Or is that a string? Oh, I, I think I know what you mean there. Okay, so yes, when you type in the application, which we did when we went through the Azure portal here. Uh, it was just a string. It's just a string. It gets validated when it runs the workflow file. It so currently doesn't get validated when you're entering in the portal. Uh, although that's a feature I would like, and I've asked the team for, but then again, I've asked for literally about 150 features. So yeah. that's a thing that None, uh, like, I don't see that in any right now creation of object in Azure. So that would be different. That would be yeah, it'd be a great service, though. Like, things like Netlify and Versal, which are other yeah, products. But in Azure, I mean, yeah. it's, there's yeah. no, there's no, but it, may, it would make sense because, like, that path exists. It's in GitHub. You could just go in the GitHub and you have the your URL from the GitHub from, like, the question just on top of it. Exactly. So yeah, so answer is it's just a string. Artifact was also uh, something Michael found uh, frustrating and or confusing when he start in ups. And I, and I agree with him. When I start playing sure. with those artifacts, 
for me it was really confusing to that where i was like what's an artifact i was i was not sure exactly what it was but then like hey, michael know. please add that to the issues on github frank put the link in there maybe you can pop it back in for the issues but this topic we're in preview so artifact is a word they chose but nothing is off the table for changing right it's in preview so if you have better ideas i like the idea of build or build assets or build artifacts uh, artifacts is a funny word it makes me think of indiana jones you know <laughs> <laughs> i'm happy you went there because that's where my mind would go uh, yeah <laughs> I was, you know, I just didn't say it. Uh, we had also one uh, question from, uh, oh, how can I say it? I Umen Hook. Uh, we didn't talk about SSL certification in custom domain, though you mentioned it earlier. So it's Let's go not look at when it. you create it. I'm assuming it's after when things are deployed. Uh, yes and no. So there was two questions there. There's SSL cert and custom domains. Yep. Out of the box, obviously we didn't get a custom domain because we didn't tell it to do it, right? But if you click on the little lock up here, I'm in Chrome, you'll notice the connection is secure and there's a certificate. So there's already a certificate associated with this site that came out of the box. If we want to custom domain it, well, that's the next demo. Oh, excellent, <laughs> excellent. So just stay with us. In YAML files, tabs or spaces from El Bruno MVP. <laughs> El Bruno like to. I'm a total uh, spaces guy, Bruno. So, uh, but I'm not a YAML fan. I got to be honest with you. <laughs> it's the only language you could screw up with one space. Oh my gosh! Yes, and and I have. Oh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Same here. But El Bruno so, like like to uh, to drop those kind of questions. <laughs> No, those are good. And a simple nerd, yeah, gotcha. I'd assume the dev filling out the form knows the app. Yeah, you would assume it, but it still would be nice, like if you made a typo. So I totally get your question. Oh, yeah, yeah so, definitely. Oh, like, it would be wonderful because sometimes, like, oh, is it forward slash, back, back slash? Like, do I need yep. to have the trailing slash? Like, you know, all those, like, mm, worst case, it's not the end of the world. It's just, like, your build failed, and then, like, you need to, you know, change. And, like, it's not dramatic because once you, it's set, it's set. But, you know, it will be a nice yep. experience, a nicer experience. Well, you know, the next step for us is did what do we get, right? So far, what have we gotten for what we did? Yep. And I mentioned this before, like we have GitHub, but we got the global scale. Like automatically, this thing is deployed around the world to multiple points of presence. Uh, we got a custom domain, which I'll show you how to do very much next. Uh, we could next, we're going to hook up functions. Ooh. And then this symbol means it's the routing. It's like setting up cores between the functions in the app. So want to go uh, set up custom domains, Frank? Oh yeah. Uh, what have, you would do? Just to, just to keep you in time, we have about 30, 30 minutes. Oh cool, cool, We're plenty. So back in the portal, you notice over here on the left, we've got these buttons. I'll make it even bigger. Custom domains is where you'd go for custom domains. <laughs> and here you click the add button. I wouldn't guess. <laughs> well. I, I laugh and Frank laughs, but sometimes the words to the menus in here are confusing. Oh um, yeah, no, no kidding. Yeah, yeah, that's for <laughs> sure. And like, it's worse. Like I do a lot of uh, French content sometime and when I switch the portal in French, oh my God. <laughs> so in here, it's actually telling you the, the two things you need to do. Uh, what it's not telling you here is you, you need to go buy your own custom domain first, right? Like Azure is not gonna go give you uh, Amazon.com, right, or something like that. You've got to go buy your URL from any provider, uh, Google DNS or GoDaddy or whatever you want. Um, once you get your domain, and I bought I bought shop at home.dev, which is why the other one works. I was like seven bucks. <laughs> and here, what it's telling you is go to your domain provider, your DNS provider, and create this C name. And if you know what that is, when you go to your domain provider and you go to DNS, there's a tab for it. All you do is you add a record called a C name. There's a button for it. And it wants three things. For www, add a C name, and you put this exact value in there. 
So basically, you're telling the internet that when you go to frankstwitch.com, whatever domain you buy, it's going to actually point to this happy coast, yada, yada, yada at Azure. And then down below, you put your custom domain. So for me, this is where I put shopathome.dev. Now, I'm not going to add it here because we've already done this in my other app. So let's go back to my shop at home app on the portal. Here it is. If I go to custom domains, you'll see there's my custom domain right there. I've already added it. This takes anywhere from, in my experience, five minutes to an hour. Why? Because creating the record takes a minute. But after the DNS record's created, all the internet servers have to go and, you know, propagate and let you know that, yeah, that's where you're going. Yeah, they're chit-chatting about the last news and, like, <laughs> passing the message. Yeah. So that's how you set up a custom domain, which is super, super easy. Um, but let's say we're back in our app now, and if I want to go look at the list of um, shopping, if I click on that, we're going to have a problem. Like, I don't even know if it shows an error. We'll see. Let's go to the console. And I'm trying to grab the little button. There we go. And notice it's saying unauthorized. And I'm getting a bunch of errors. That's because there is no API right now. It's hard to call them when they, they're not there. Yep. So before we go hook up the API, um, do we have any other questions in there? Yep. Um... I think uh, I like Bell Data was asking, I guess it depends on the IP address or the OS browser default link. Oh no, like that's the um, portal related. Yes, yeah. So I think it's Catnap, Canaps. I don't know how to pronounce the name. Could I talk about the multiple points of presence? Sure. When creating the app in the portal, it prompts you to select a single region. Yes, and there are certain, like behind the scenes, like you're getting storage. Storage is Azure Storage, which hosts your content. You're, you're going to get Azure Functions for your APIs if you have APIs, which we'll do in a minute. You're going to get you know, your points of presence. You're going to get, um, it's actually using a product called Key Vault for Azure to handle your SSL certificate. So you're getting a bunch of different Azure stuff behind the scenes. So we're choosing a region because some of those things don't need to be propagated around the world. So it's going to pick the region closest to you for those things. Whereas the points of presence, which is where all your your storage is, which is where your HTML is for um, ease of use, all your HTML is actually propagated to all the regions that the points of presence support. And I forget exactly which ones they are. But that's why you're choosing a region up front. Really good question, CapNX. And a simple nerd's asking, are there dev logs with user changes of domain, app, or some other things? That's a really good point. What if you make configuration changes and you want to see those changes? That'd be nice. Um, I don't know if that ability is there, but I'm going to look into that myself. And if Does you'd like to... Monitor doesn't track that in Azure? I'm not sure if... So you can hook up Azure Monitor to static web apps um, very easily. It's just adding a key, and I'll show you how to do that. But I'm not sure if it picks up those kind of changes, like did the custom domain change? But I'm going to ask the team and find out. That's a great question. Thank you, a simple nerd. Um, let's show you where that happens, by the way. It's so like here's my production site <clears throat> under configuration. You should see my Azure Monitor key value right there. There's my App Insights instrumentation key, and it's hidden, <laughs> so you can't have it. But basically, all I did was I set up App Insights, which monitors, does telemetry and logging for you. And I connected it to this site by putting the key value in um, in this configuration. So you can think of this like um, an environment file for your application, which you might be familiar with if you do Node or ASP.NET or Java. Excuse me. Really good questions. Uh, let's see here. Chris Ketter, my auth is related to using it when developing locally is something that can be proxied. I think Chris is asking, can you do your authorization locally? 
um, and not just in production. Today, you cannot, although our good buddy Frank Wasim, who works on our team, is working on an app and he might be close to being done, which allows you to do author authentication authorization locally so you can test it while you're developing on your local machine. We'll show auth too in a minute. Hello, what are we using to create the static the static app? Uh, in this case, uh, W. Robinson, great question. We used the Azure portal. We went right to the Azure portal. Um, I have a subscription because I work for Microsoft, <laughs> but if you sign up with a free trial, you can use that. And right now, we probably should say this, Frank, um, Azure Static Web Apps, the preview is 100% free. So everything you're doing is completely free. How oh, you thought it was, uh... In my mind, when I read the Robinson question, it was like, what did you do for creating the the HTML? Oh, okay. Not like that's my, <laughs> the way I understood the question. Well, I, I could answer that too. I use Svelte in this case. Um, I just went to the, and if you want to try one of your own, by the way, go back to this John Papa Hello Worlds repo. And there's literally whatever your favorite web framework is, it's got to be here. Uh, and there's actually a pull request right now for Blazor. So ASP.netters, that will be in here very soon. We're just vetting it, making sure it works. Um, and it's called Hello Worlds because it's like the simplest version of all these different apps. Is it the community, uh, community kit? Nope. I will pop this into your chat. It's literally called John Papa slash Hello Worlds. Okay. I will paste it in the chat, everybody, in the one second and a half. If you're not familiar with me, folks, you'll one thing you'll learn quickly is I have a repo for everything. <laughs> so I human huck is asking, I already added my custom domain, but I was not able to add an SSL certificate. I believe you're asking if you want to add your own certificate. I don't believe that that is currently supported, uh, but that is high on our list of features to add. Again, we're in preview. Uh, if that's important to you, and I assume it is, uh, please add that to the GitHub issues. Yeah, the static website that we just put earlier in the chat, go there, open an issue, or just do a plus one or if uh, the issue is already created earlier in the chat. And Matt Lebeau is asking about, he's using Wasm with uh, probably Blazor Spa right now. Should that work too? Yeah, there's actually a way to make it work today. If you Google Blazor and static web apps, a blog post by Tim Hewer, who works with us at Microsoft, he wrote how to do it in a blog post. Yeah. Uh, but there will be one here within like a week as well in this repo. Yeah, Christopher Manner also, I think, wrote a blog post about that. Great. So since we're on limited time, let's go build some more of this stuff to show how it works real quick. Yep. All right, so we're back in a wrap. We want to add functions. Any of you who saw me do this knew that when I filled out the, I'm looking for the repo, there we go, knew that when we filled out the uh, workflow file, which another way to get there, by the way, is to go to the root of the repo, click on GitHub workflows, there's the file. You know that I typed in a non-existent folder for the API location <laughs> called doesn't exist, when in fact it actually does exist the name of the API folder in this repo, uh, and we'll go up here real quick and show you, is actually called API. So I already created some Azure functions in this folder, and you could create your own. So in here, what I need to do is I need to change this to point to API. So just because I don't want to go into VS Code yet, I can just edit this file by clicking on the pencil. I can go to doesn't exist. Type API, I'm gonna start a commit. I'll tell it to commit directly to master. Normally I'd make a new branch. Actually, should I? Yeah, let's do it, let's create a new branch because this shows off the preview URL. Excellent. So we'll do a new branch, we'll propose the changes. And right now, because we are in preview, it's only f um, Azure function and JavaScript that are supported, am I correct? Like by default, I mean? Right now, by default, it's just JavaScript, although definitely high on the list is Python and .NET, for example. Uh, I'm going to create a pull request now. And then when I create the pull request, something cool is going to happen. So I've got a pull request, and you'll notice some things are queuing up here, these jobs. 
This is because we have the workflow file looking at master and it just noticed I made a pull request of my new branch to master. So what's happening here is it's saying, hey, there's a, there's a um, workflow file looking at this and it's going to run. Now if I click on details, notice my workflow file is running again. And what it's gonna do is, and it should take about a minute, right? I think it took a minute last time. It's gonna go through and it's going to build the app and deploy it. But let's go ahead and look at the actions for a minute. I'll make this full screen. If we look at the one that worked before, and I go back to deploy and build on the left, and I look at build and deploy, I kind of skimmed through all this stuff before, but I want to show you what happened here. There was a step where it said, I'm going to run npm install, and that worked. But if I look for the word doesn't exist, Notice it's got a message here saying, warning, the API directory location could not be found. Instead of erroring out, because I gave it an invalid folder, it's saying Azure Functions will not be created. So it's just going to skip it. So this build process looks and says, look, if I can find your API, I'm going to try to deploy it. But if there is no API, that's fine. I'm just going to deploy your app without it. But now our new action, so our new pull request, which was queued up two minutes ago, should be close to being done. And instead of looking here, because that'll turn green as soon as it's ready, if we go back to the pull request, and we look at this one right here, because that's the one we just created, as soon as it's done, two magical things are gonna happen, which I really like. One, it's gonna turn green, hopefully, because <laughs> uh, it means it worked. Red will mean it didn't. And the second thing is, it's deploying it to another URL. We need to know what that URL is. It's actually gonna add a comment right to this pull request telling you where that staging URL is. So we'll give it a second here to go through that. Any questions on here? Would this demo showcase a rolling back a deploy? Um, no, this demo will not let uh, show, it, it's built by the way. It will not show us rolling back a deploy because we're actually having a deploy to two separate URLs. I mean, to, to showcase uh, like a rollback, what you need is to revert and get, and then it will yep. redeploy, right? Yeah, and that's, you could do that there. Um, notice here now we have a new URL, which looks like the old one. So if we go look at the old one, it's this zero, happy coast, zero eight BA, blah, blah, blah. It looks the same, but there's something special here. Notice it says East US two in the middle. This is another place that the region you chose shows up. Your staging slot or your preview slot is only deployed to one region. This one is not deployed around the world. Um, and this may change the future, I don't know, but this is how it works today. And if I click on that, now you're gonna see there's the app. They look the same. There's the original, and there's the new app. If I click on list, hopefully we have an API. Oh, I forgot to add one other thing, but the API should be there if I go to, I gotta remember the API. I think it's slash API slash products. Oh, I haven't logged in, that's why. So I'm gonna log in with my Twitter account. I'm gonna grant consent and bam, there's my data. Um, so we just showed how to hook up the API, which is super easy to do. Uh, let's see here. Other stuff here in the questions. Oh, Glaber talking about static web apps. I have a question. Definitely Mr. Smoothie. I like your name, by the way. Files in the container are case sensitive, served through anonymous access, and are available through read operations. So if you have a link deleted, but someone goes to it, they get a 404. Um, I'll take your word for that. I haven't tried that, but that sounds like it makes sense. Is there a question on that? Are you trying to see if maybe you could redirect? Feel free to add that back in, Mr. Smoothie, if you can elaborate on your question. I think I'm going to call you Mr. Smoothie from now on, Frank. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Smoothie, why? why? Why what? I'm sorry. Um, so if you have an about HTML, but someone goes to about, they got the 404 page. 
Um, look, are you reading next? I'm not seeing that. IS link deleted and link deleted are the same. Oh, so I was wondering if the uh, it's the, the file are case sensitive, maybe? Um, well, to show you here, for example, like let's go to capital products. Notice here, it doesn't know what that is in this particular case. So if I go lowercase, it does work. Yeah, so it is case sensitive. I'm assuming because it's based on Azure storage and storage is case sensitive. Oh, he's saying his link's getting deleted. Sorry, gotcha. Oh. Oh, Twitch. <laughs> yeah. Gotcha. Yeah, right now they are case sensitive. And uh, if you have concerns about that, again, please go to the issues for the GitHub and file your issue there. And the team can look at that and listen to your concerns. Frank, we need to look at auth because auth is amazing. Yeah, let's do that because we have uh, 15 minutes max. Okay. Well, so we, we, I don't think we have anybody after, but I want to... I know you're busy. So. No worries. Um, I got to remember what app I'm looking at. Okay, I'm looking at the secondary app. Let's go back. Let's just use this one. In the secondary app, notice I had to authenticate. One of the cool things about this, if I can go back to the GitHub repo, which, where was that GitHub repo? Let's go back to John Papa at GitHub. What did I call it? Frank Twitch? I think so. Yeah, there it is. Yep. If you go into the Svelte app and I go to public, there's a file in here called routes.json. Now, I already put this in there. I cheated a little bit. This is a special file that is deployed in the public folder. Mm -hmm. It's important it's in the public folder because remember, that's the folder we're deploying to Azure. In that specific, in the Svelte framework. Uh, in, in, with Svelte, it happens to go to public, yes. So, it could, uh, so depend, when, it could change based on the framework you're using. Yes. So if we go back to the Hello Worlds, like if I was using um, React, let's go find that, it would be in the build folder. Okay. If so I was it's, using it's, View, So it's in the, uh, the artifact folder. That's where yes. that file needs to be. At exactly. Root, right? You said at the root? Yeah, the root of that artifact folder. Uh, so in this file, I've got a couple things here. What I've done is I've said, look, I want you to, when somebody goes to use auth, which we're using easy auth, that's what's baked into it. If somebody tries to authenticate with Facebook or Google, notice I'm saying return a status code of 404. I'm basically disallowing people to authenticate with Facebook or Google, just for no other reason than just to show you how to do it. <laughs> but if they try to log in with any of these five, by default, all five are supported. And that's Azure Active Directory, GitHub, Twitter, Google, or Facebook. Because I did not disallow Twitter, I can just click on Twitter and it will redirect me back there if I've already authenticated with it. Notice now it's saying, welcome John Papa, that's my Twitter ID, and you've logged in with Twitter. And then I can log out as well. So that's what that routes JSON file is showing. And then here I'm saying, look, you cannot see the discounts unless you're in a preferred role. Now we didn't show how to set up a preferred role, but if I go back to, let's go to the um, production app just to show it. Mm -hmm. So I'm in my list. Notice I can't see it because I'm unauthorized, but if I go to Twitter, I'm now authenticated, goes back to the app, I can see the list data as soon as the function runs and gets my data out of my database. But if I click on discounts, I'm not authorized. That's because I have to be in this preferred role to see them. So how do you do that? Well, if we go back to the portal, we go into the shop at home app. And now if I click on role management on the left, Notice I have said that, and I've already set this up, my John Papa GitHub ID has these roles. You always get anonymous and authenticated. But I also added one that I named preferred. So, Frank, what is your Twitter handle? F Bouchero. So F B O U C H E R O S. Like that? Yep. Great. And now you pick the domain, which you can pick your main domain or your secondary one, the, the preview URL. 
and I can give you a role. I can say, hey, Frank's going to be preferred. And I can say the, inv the invitation is going to expire in an hour. I can generate this. I then copy this link and I can give it to Frank. Uh, let me just do that in the chat real quick. Why not? So, Frank, click on that crazy link I just gave you in Skype. <laughs> trust you, sir. Ooh. Always trust me. App authorize. Yeah. Done. All right, and if I refresh. Oh, grand consent. Sorry, I missed one. Yeah, you've got a grand. Yeah. Yep. And there we go. So everybody can see now Frank's Twitter provider and now also has preferred. So what does this mean? It means if I go in with my GitHub ID, which we'll do real quick, I'm going to log out of Twitter. And like I said, I'm going to use GitHub. Now I'm logged in with GitHub and notice I can see the discounts. I can see the lists. I can do anything I want inside of here. So when Frank Lott goes to this site and he uses uh, Twitter, you could also now see the discounts too, Frank. Yeah. Uh, and then the rest of these routes, I'm just setting up routes. You don't have to have these routes, but this is for me to say I wanted every user who authenticates to see the shopping list, but I wanted only the users who are in preferred to be able to see the discounts and to edit the shopping list. It's just a way of setting up roles. And you can set as many of these up as you want, the roles. Uh, and I believe you only get 25 users today, although I have to look in the docs to refresh my memory. Uh, so that's how many users you can set up with your app by default for the free preview. Okay. Well, preview that is free. So 20 users for free, it's good. 20, 25, I think. 20, yeah. Whatever, like 20-something, 20 20-ish. Yeah. <laughs> Something like that. <laughs> And if we go look at here in the docs, here's authentication. I'm going to look for 25. It's not in there. It tells you all about the roles and how to add them. Here's the five authentication providers you can choose. Uh, let's see here. Removing user. You can also remove users. Like I can go back and I can say, Frank, I don't like you anymore. I can click on you and I can delete you. Bye, Frank. <laughs> you, won't, you won't delete me, but you could delete my account. <laughs> yeah. That'd be so cool. I just deleted Frank off of Twitter. <laughs> uh, and there's so much more you can do, but like that is that is really the crux of it. And to kind of wrap up that piece, we can take some questions. You know, the cool thing is we literally just did all of this by setting up, you know, the GitHub. We got our global scale with pre points of presence. We got a custom domain, an SSL cert. Azure functions, we have cores with a reverse proxy, we got CI CD, we've got our authentication and authorization and routing control. Like we can actually set up 404s and redirects and basically all this stuff we talked about is everything you get inside of Azure Static Web Apps. Uh, and just because we work for Microsoft, Frank and I have to show that if you want to try this yourself, you can click on any of these links uh, to find the docs or to try this out for yourself. There's a online tutorial at Microsoft Learn here. That's the aka.ms slash SWA for Static Web Apps Frameworks. If you go to that link, you can actually try all this yourself and um, you don't even need to sign up for Azure. There's a free sandbox. You literally press a button and it sets up a sandbox in Azure so you can deploy React, Angular, Viewer, Svelte. I put a clickable link with for the learn module in the in the chat. Sweet, super easy. That's cool to learn because you have all the exercise and they they have the sandbox thing. I think. Yeah. Cool. I saw a question here too about from a simple nerd. How long does the preview URL last after it's merged into master? Uh, once the PR goes away, the URL goes away. So once you close that. Uh, pull request. At least that's been my experience. Once the pull request is gone, uh, that preview URL is not there anymore. Uh, so you'll notice I kept my pull request open like forever. Uh, if we go to my app and I click on code in GitHub, if I go to my pull request, this pull request has been open since May 18th <laughs> because I wanted to keep using that URL, which I can just click on the pull request now and you can just see there's the URL right there. Good question. Uh, let's see here. Outlook, really simple. That is nice. 
are user role permission limited to a certain number too? The role based permission, I think you could create what I, I like. I'm assuming there's a limit in AD of the custom role you could create, but I, I have no clue what that number is. The number of roles itself? Uh, that's a good question. I don't know like, the answer. I, to I that. felt like it's endless, but I'm assuming there is a number, there's a max somewhere, but uh, no clue. Um, yeah, like if I just kept on typing this, I wonder how long it goes for. Oh, know? no, I mean, like, <laughs> how many? <laughs> Are you missing with me again? <laughs> no, 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 like how many roles? Because you, like, you, you could create with... dev and like a senior dev and then a junior dev and super dev, and like you could create endless number of different roles, right? Uh, I would think, and that's why I was trying this, like, I was just typing in a bunch of strings. And like, if you did that, let's put one at the end. I don't know the answer to this, but if we did that, notice how it seems to have it over there. So it looks like you can create an endless number of them, but I will ask and uh, find out from the team. And if you want to ask me that question on Twitter, I will uh, get you an answer to that. That's a great question. Um, you know, something I forgot to mention, and you're making me think of this, uh, Vin I. A. Caesar. Thank you for asking. Any tips on CLI commands to interact with those roles instead of going to the UI? Uh, there is an Azure CLI for using static web apps. Uh, I don't use that one much, so I don't know the exact commands, but you can try that out. It's in the docs. Uh, but there's also a VS Code extension for static web apps. And let's see, if I don't have it loaded here, you could go into the extensions and type in static web apps. And I don't have it installed on this machine. It's a preview, but if you install that, you can look down and see, like, it, you can actually create the app without going to Azure Portal at all. You can just click this plus button. It's going to say, hey, you want to sign with GitHub, which it'll do for you. You select your repository, your application folder, your API, and your build artifact. It's the same questions. You're just doing it in VS Code. And then you're going to get this panel inside of um, VS Code where you can actually update and manipulate your Azure Static Web App right from VS Code. So you never have to go to the uh, portal at all. So I'm glad you asked because I forgot to mention the VS Code extension. So go download it and install it. I'll put a link inside of Frank's Twitter or uh, Skype, sorry. <laughs> What? Whatever the heck we're using. Soon we'll be using um, Teams, but uh, it's not there yet. Yep, and yep, Frank put more in there for the docs. Does the extension work in Visual Studio? Uh, no, these extensions only, this one here is for VS Code. I'm sure it will uh, come eventually. Got one. But... Yes, yeah. I mean, again, preview. Yeah, So uh, in preview, VS Code has a, a little bit faster um, Life cycle is it that like you know like the feature come faster on VS Code, but it's lighter, right? Yeah, it's super light. Like installing VS Code, super light and quick. And um, we find, quite frankly, that most people dealing with uh, these web frameworks are using VS Code. Uh, it's the most popular web editor out there, so that's usually the first place you'll see these things pop up. But yeah. Visual Studio, absolutely, I, I can see this. If it's not there now, I can see this coming. Oh, definitely, yeah. I think we missed, uh, what's the largest performance bottleneck from uh, Captain Down, Cap Captain Downs? Captain Downs Z. Yeah. I like that name. You guys have all cool names. I'm, I'm boring. I just got John Papa. <laughs> uh, what's the biggest bottleneck? So there is a, when you're looking at these apps, you're getting your content stored at multiple points of presence around the world. Uh, so that's super fast. Uh, your bottlenecks are going to come from things like your uh, how much content you're pushing. What this isn't solving is if you store, for example, an image, and that image is um, 10 meg, <laughs> and you don't compress it, it's still going to be serving your 10 meg image. So you have to still be smart. Like you have to build your apps so they're optimized. Is kind of my point. Um, you still want to build your apps, optimize your images, etc. Uh, that's a big bottleneck. 
Another thing, or could be one. Another thing is that when you're using Azure Functions API, the data, if you have a consumption-based Azure Functions API, what does that mean? Uh, it's what Frank meant earlier about pay as you go. You get Azure Functions and what happens in the background is you don't pay for it when you're not using it, but as soon as somebody hits it, it cranks up a server and lets them use it. Uh, when you're using consumption-based functions, there is what you call a cold start to start the function. So the very first user who hits it is going to see a couple of seconds delay for the data. You may have noticed this when we went to the app right here for the first time and I clicked on list. Now it's instant because it's up. But the very first time I went to shop at home, if nobody has been on that site for, I don't know, 20 minutes or so or whatever the time is, uh, it takes two or three seconds for it to crank up. Um, but if you've got 10,000 users, that's not a big deal because only the first one's gonna see that two or three seconds. After that, it's, as you can see, it's lightning fast. Yeah, just just by doing your uh, validation test to see if the website is running, you will wake up everything. Yep. Or you could pay more, I'm assuming, like for like maybe uh, like when things go GA, you could pay for the reserve, uh, I forgot how they call that in functions. You can have uh, like premier? the reserve instance or something like that. I forgot the name. Yeah, I think they, I think they call it the premier level. Uh, I may have the words wrong too, but yeah. yeah you there's can... a prime version in function. So maybe it will follow. But again, like we don't know because right now it's in preview. So we'll, we'll see in, when yeah. it's in GA. There, all we can tell you is that there's a very good possibility when it goes full GA that there will be a level, like a pricing level above free like they'll still be free, but there'll be a level above free if you need like always on functions or you need other stuff. What's gonna be in that level, I don't know yet and Frank doesn't know, so we're not gonna guess. Yeah, well, we'll we, we'll need to uh, get you back again on, on the stream, John, because the, the chat is in fire and the time is running out. So um, if you have any questions, you can always ping John Papa spam him on twitter his uh, twitter account is just above his head john papa john underscore papa or you can ping me if we should host and i will do my best <laughs> because i, I, I can't learned tell a lot today. you're below me <laughs> um thank you john for being with us today it was awesome i seriously learned a lot i thought i knew uh, my static uh, web app and uh yeah i learned stuff i'm happy and i'm just looking forward to do a one one of those i need to migrate my uh my blog on that you should it's a lot of fun yeah but my problem right now is i'm using dot net so <laughs> well you could you could do blazer there yeah, you go well, i'm doing blazer for i have a little project that i'm streaming on and uh, i'm doing blazer so we'll probably do that for for that thing thank you a lot thank you for spending your time with us for uh, people in the chat thank you a lot to uh, spending our, your time with us, learning, sharing, asking your question. Tons of very good questions today. And like I said, if you have any question, ping us on Twitter. We like your feedback. If you have feature requests and stuff, go in the GitHub, create issues over there. Uh, the product is in preview, so it's the perfect time to do those kind of things. And Thanks, with everybody. that, the word of the, the the word of the end the end of the last word all is good man i think that i really love all the questions and yeah you all gave me some good things to think about and please as frank mentioned find us on twitter and uh, ask anything else you might have forgotten about so with that i will say bye bye yeah. <laughs>